This November, creepy slogans appeared all over China. One of them said, If one person refuses to give birth to more children, the whole village will be artificially inseminated. As many of you know, in order to control the population, China has been implementing the one-child policy for over 30 years, allowing couples to have only one child. But now, China's attitude toward birth control has changed dramatically. Why? China is the world's most populous country. But due to the population control policies, it is now facing more aging and gender imbalance problems than any other country. In order to save the country from drastic population loss, the Chinese Communist Party officially allowed couples to have two children in 2016, which was again relaxed to allow people to have three children. In fact, Chinese culture, like traditions in other parts of the world, encourages couples to have and be proud of having many children. However, instead of a baby boom, the government's two-child policy has seen a decline in the Chinese birth rate, which only surged a bit in 2016 and fell to 10.48 per 1,000 births in 2019, with 14.65 million births, and is expected to fall to less than 11 million by 2030. Since 2000, China's fertility rate has been lower than Japan's. At the same time, China's elderly population has more than doubled in less than 10 years, and by 2019, the number of people over 60 years of age exceeded 250 million, accounting for 18.1% of the population, which means China has begun to enter into a population aging era. By 2035, China's population aged 60 or older is expected to reach 400 million, accounting for 28% of the population. This is the fastest rate of aging compared to any country in the world. To encourage people to have children, the 2019 Standing Committee of the National People's Congress NPC, of the Chinese Communist Party has even proposed lowering the marriage age to 18 or lower, but this policy spiked opposition in Chinese society. Many analysts and even officials of the Chinese government believe that China's population statistics are inaccurate and grossly overestimate the size of the country's population, which is detrimental to the government's ability to formulate effective population and economic policies. That is one of the reasons why Beijing is carrying out its seventh census. However, even the ongoing national census faces many obstacles. How serious is China's population crisis? Yi Fu Shen, a researcher at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and author of Big Country with an Empty Nest, told VOA on December 1 that in 1980, China's median age was only 22, India's was only 20, and the US's was 30. But by 2020, China's median age will have risen to 41-42 compared to 38 in the US and 28 in India. It is estimated by 2035, China's median age will reach 49.50, while the U.S. will be under 42, and India will be 34. In other words, the population will have a two-generation gap between China and India by 2035. In addition, the one-child policy, coupled with China's tendency to prefer sons to daughters, has resulted in a male population that is approximately 20% larger than the female population. China's official figures show that at least 30 million men of marriageable age in 2020 are still single, and the inability of men to find a spouse has become a social problem. In fact, scientists have proven that the ratio of naturally reproducing men to women is about 1 to 1, and it's hard to imagine where all those missing girls have gone in China. Severe and widespread abortions may explain this, and we will come back to that later. People's inability to find a partner and to have a child will exacerbate China's aging problem. This will result in China's labor force, innovation, social welfare structure, and medical system suffering a devastating blow, and its competitiveness with other countries will be significantly reduced. This is why the Chinese Communist Party is so anxious to encourage people to give birth. However, even though the government allowed the Chinese to have more children, the Chinese stopped having them. The issue of the inability to properly raise children is almost inseparable from the discussion forums and messages in the related news. One comment received a lot of retweets and likes on a Chinese social media platform, stating, Even if the state allows us to have 10 children now, we don't want that, unless they raise income levels and social welfare and suppresses housing prices across the country. <laughs> Uh, 
啊，但是这个收入的话呢，就并没有什么呃明显的这个增加。一个小孩可能基本上可以维持一下，但是如果生二胎的话，从从出生。到这个从小的抚养，然后再到这个什么幼儿园啊，什么上学教育啊，等等各方面，这个是要花很多钱的。呃，以目前呃，就说中国很多底层老百姓的这个收入状况，真的是负担太大了。China has become the world's second largest economy since its reform and opening up in 1979, but its people have not become truly wealthy. On the contrary, the gap between the rich and the poor in China has grown wider and wider. Since the Gini coefficient exceeded 0.61 in 2010, no official data has been released by the Chinese government. Let's go back to the horrific slogan we talked about in the beginning. This is not simply a regional policy, but similar slogans have been appearing all over China, where people took photos and posted them online. Similar slogans, including. It is the unshirkable responsibility of the village committee of the Communist Party to get the whole village household to have two children. Also appear in the rural villages. In China, when the government is about to implement certain policies, such slogans appear in large characters all over the country, which you can regard as a political wind vane. Ironically, some netizens compare the slogans about forced abortions during the early one-child policy implementation with pictures of forced insemination nowadays. They made ridiculous contrasts, such as in the past they said, "Break it, shed it, abort it; the kid can't be born," and now they say, "If you have it, you cannot abort it. You should give birth to it." In the past, they said, "If one gives more than one birth, everyone in the village will be sterilized," but now they say. If one person refuses to give birth to more children, the whole village will be artificially inseminated. Some may not know how brutal the forced abortion policy was carried out in China. According to the China Obstetrics and Gynecology Annual Report from 2014 to 2015, just a year before Beijing announced its two-child policy, at least nine million abortions were performed in China, accounting for one sixth of the total number of abortions in the world that year, the most of any country. Another statistic that many Chinese have been frequently referring to is that 13 million abortions were performed in 1995. This huge number reflects how devastating the situation was at the time. <laughs> This also leads to another question: Should procreation be a fundamental freedom of the people? In today's political atmosphere in China, the Chinese Communist Party continues to tighten its power in both livelihood and economic matters. Some people on the internet have raised concerns that the tragedy that was once forced abortion carried out during the one-child policy will be played out in an opposite way: that women will be forced to give birth. After all, undoubtedly, the demographic dividend that has driven China's development for the past 30 years seems to be ending. In the past 30 years, urbanization in China, driven by the demographic dividend and real estate, the core driver of China's economy, have begun to hollow out. China's current urbanization rate is 59.58 percent, about the same as Japan's in the 1960s. Unlike Japan, the population structure was very young at that time, with only 7 percent of the population over the age of 65. But China has entered an aging society already, with the elderly accounting for 18% of the population. In short, China's development is already in decline, which could be seen in various economic figures, including their GDP. This also means that, in the future, China's urban-rural divide will grow larger and larger, with a high concentration of the population in or moving to cities, causing greater social problems such as increased crime rates, reduced arable land, and food crises. In fact, if a government is responsive to public opinion, the people can always find a way out, and the country's prosperity can be brought about because even the wisdom of the government is limited. And the policies and measures it imposes may be wrong.